And I still believe Formula E, I know we've got the D, the sim racers, uh, but we, you know, we're talking about the influencers and we haven't really had a major influencer in there. Obviously, we've got some great drivers like Alexander Lin, uh, Simona Di Silvestro, who, who have turned up and, and have done great jobs, actually, in those sim, as, as our sort of like influencers and test racers. But, you know, you've got the likes of now Lando Norris doing the Australian V8 supercars. He's done the IndyCar. We still haven't, we haven't gone big. We haven't really tried to get big influence or try and get a big name who wouldn't normally drive a Formula E car to drive one. And, you know, to quote Lando Norris, because I've, I've been watching a few of his Twitch streams because it's interesting to see how he does in these events. You know, he says it's great to drive against these drivers simply because, and in these cars, because normally you don't get the chance to race against these drivers and pit yourselves up against these drivers. So I, I honestly think if Formula E went asking that, you know, people, you know, would come knocking and say, yeah, all right, we'll come. You know, you've got the race. You've got Jack Nichols and Dario Franchitti in the race. You know, why not get Jan Magnussen driving in the sim race? Why not get an Emmanuel Pirro driving in the... Why, why not get a big name? to actually just come and drive. It's on the same platform. Yeah, I, I, I can see your argument there. I think if I'm, if I'm playing devil's advocate here, looking at it from Formula E's point of view, it could be that they don't want to attract the same kind of audience that Formula 1 has, and that's why they've gone for influencers like, I don't know, Jimmy Broadbent, Mike Chanel, who've sort of got audiences that view them on YouTube and view either their streaming or they've got like a chat show like we do or they just do top five lists and stuff like that sort of easily fairly easily digestible content but um and the, yeah we haven't really had any kind of we've, we've got a couple of you know vaguely it's, it feels almost like they're kind of fill, trying desperately to fill out the slots in the uh, sim races race like uh it was great to see alex lynn Serena Di Silvestro, etc but then you see some of the other, especially near the back, you do get the sense sometimes that Mike Chanel, yeah, the guy does his best, but he's not really on the pace with everyone else. And uh, you, you've got to think, you got to think, so you, I mean, you just bring an audience in. It's not like, you know, massive audience, like say someone like Lando Norris might have, uh, particularly. And yeah, I, I personally think they, like, I agree with you, Jack, they should switch tact and get, try and try and get your Max Verstappens, your Lando Norrises, your George Russells, et cetera. Uh, interested in you know at least taking part in the A Formula E race, it would at least sort of bump up uh, the viewing figures a fair bit. But at the but same time, I can see it from their point of view, they they don't want um, to just associate themselves and invite that comparison with Formula One, I guess. Is that something, Jack? So I just think that moves us on nicely to our to our next topic about you know has Formula E with this sim racing thing only really attracted the core Formula E fans? You know, with their set having all twenty four drivers. And in, in the sim race, it's, you know, the sim race is just there, really. The main event is the 24 drivers. So you could have the sim race, in a sense, or or was it wrong for them to, to attract the 24 drivers so you can allow? Because at the moment, you can't allow, a, 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 you know, legend old drivers, current F1 drivers to actually race alongside um, Formula E drivers because the grid is full, which is great. And I love that the grid is full. But at the same time, the grid is pretty much full in IndyCar. The grid is pretty much full at, in, what is it, uh, the V8 supercars. Like, they've all got their all their championship drivers in there. And so do we. But there's no harm in actually upping the car numbers to 26 or 25 and having a special guest come in and actually race in in a Formula E event in, 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 the, in the actual driver's race. Yeah, no, that's it's basically what it's basically what I was about to say. Why not have two spare cars? Um, uh, why not have two cars? This is 24 hours after I said, don't uh, don't allow any more teams into Formula E. But um, but yeah, for this, I will allow a 13th team in Formula E and make it. Uh, yeah, just yeah, just have two special guest seats race. We see um, uh, we've seen in the F1 virtual race, we've seen Thibaut Courtois, we've seen Ben Stokes, we've seen Ian Poulter. And um, about 20 minutes before we, uh, uh, 20 minutes before we started this recording, it was announced that Man City player um, Sergio Aguero has now been confirmed for Rebel Racing this weekend. That's pretty damn cool. Just like seeing like all these like top flight footballers coming in, and 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 just people not from Formula, for not not from Formula One, just have a ha, have a go at doing this and yeah i think it's a great idea um we've seen we've seen and i'm not suggesting this happens but 
Rita Ora was uh, Rita Ora was on the show a couple of weeks ago, but so um, doing some stuff for UNICEF. So maybe get some UNICEF ambassadors um, to do um, uh, to do a race or something uh, for just for the fun of it, and it's raising money for the charity that they are ambassadors for. Exactly. I think kind of trailed off at the end there, but yeah, Felipe Massa is exactly. a UNICEF ambassador actually. He's um, also a driver. Yeah, yeah, no, so he, no. We don't, need, we don't need to drag him in. <laughs> <laughs> He's already here. No, but you know, it's amazing. When you think about the Formula One event and you know, you've got all those names and now you've got Sergio Aguero, Thibaut Courtois, you know, two footballers and two people that you'd probably never imagine were even Formula One fans. You don't know because you, you, we haven't had this opportunity to find that out about them. And there might be some professional sport athletes out there who are fans of Formula E, who think, you know, I'm a fan of racing and I really like Formula E. You know, Nico Rosberg, now I know Nico Rosberg is a massive advocate for the championship, but obviously it'd be cool just having him on the grid. And obviously Sky F1, when they were doing all this, you know, they sent Jensen Button a sim rig and they were sending Nico Rosberg a sim rig. So we know there's a sim rig coming to him. And obviously Spain's restrictions have been, you know, lifted slightly. So I, I don't know if he's received that. But, you know, I'm pretty sure if former Marie got on the phone to Nico Rosberg, they just did an interview with Nico Rosberg, Jamie Regal and Alejandro Agag recently on Nico Rosberg's YouTube channel. So even getting him in... To, to just race one of the races, a Formula One world champion, that'd still bring numbers across. It'd still bring people over. And, you know, attracting that audience, and that would then attract the Formula One audience, which I know, Ed, you said, you know, they shouldn't really go for, but I think they have to. They have to go for it. Because if they don't go for it, then what fans are they attracting? They're just waiting for new fans to appear. But where are these new fans going to appear from? You need to go into the community that is still attracting new fans today in Formula One. And actually bring them over and say, look, Formula 1's great. Brilliant. Love it. But there's also this. And I'm sure you'll love this as well. And you've got to bring them over somehow. Yeah, I agree with you. I, I, know, I know what I said earlier was more sort of trying to get into Formula E's shoes and sort of, right, what's their, what's their point of view and why they've done the approach that they have. And I agree that it, it's flawed. That you, you, you go for this esports audience and they've been doing it for years as well. Like um, at the actual Formula E races, they've been fighting. I don't know, Ali or whoever, just to come over and drive the car at Buenos Aires. Like, uh, and then he would do a video on it, and then that would be it. They, like, they would sort of like, oh, I got to drive Formula E car. That was cool. Anyway, back to cool 50 billion Call of Duty videos or whatever. <laughs> and it just sort of shows that maybe this gaming, the, this sort of, they, they always sort of assumed that this gaming audience would flock to Formula E, and that's not really happened. So maybe they should change tack and go for Formula One as well. But the, of course, the problem there is, again, that you've got these two similar things. And Formula E, they consciously want to avoid that comparison with Formula 1 because if you do, then it just, people just go, oh, these cars are so much slower than, for, than Formula 1. They haven't got the same grip as Formula 1, blah, 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 which is kind of not really the point. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. But at the same time, WEC, for example, great series doesn't have the same grip as a Formula 1 car, doesn't have the same, well, you could say that's have the same speed, but if you think GT Pro, they don't. And GT Pro is probably the best series in WEC, in my opinion. And But I'm a, you know, I would say I'm a, form, I'm a racing fan, and I'm a Formula 1 fan. I was a Formula 1 fan before I was any other racing type of fan. But just because it's a great racing series, you know, I, I started watching it. Formula E is exactly the same, you know, Formula 1 fan. Then became, you know, enjoyed WEC. Now I'm a Formula E fan because it's great racing. And, you know, I think, you know, if you go after the community that is already there, you will win people over. If you don't go into those influences and start talking to them, Jack, you know, you're never, ever going to, you're never, ever going to break in. No, no. And yeah, I, I could, yeah, I completely agree. I mean, like, I grew up watching Formula One and I never really ventured out for any anything else until I was maybe about 11 or 12 when I properly got into motorsport because i had other obsessions before that but still um uh but still yeah i think they do need to yeah they need to pinch some formula they need to pinch some formula one fans and uh and uh, and the thing is one thing one thing that i do know is quite a lot of um formula one for uh, uk formula one fans had actually booked to go to the london e Prix. so the the fact that that's off is hasn't helped but i think uh, I think once people have like been to a race, they they they're now involved in this bubble 
uh, uh, and this bubble ju just keeps on getting bigger and bigger. So annoyingly, we can't really do that during, because of the scenario. But I think, um, uh, but I think with with with, uh, with something like this, they did. And uh, but the, as I said, the fact that Formula One and Formula E are clashing at the same time on Saturday afternoons, that's not helping either. either. So you you you're trying to attract the fan base, but you're also trying to take them away from what they're currently doing. Yeah, and that that's the thing, right, with Formula E. They just they really they just need to attract the fans. They need to do something that would actually, you know, bring people across. We're not take telling people don't watch Formula One, watch Formula E instead. We're the future, we're the ones that are gonna be relevant. You know, there is a world where we can all, you know, coexist Ed. Exactly. Yeah, it's not one or the other. There's they're different series and they provide uh, obviously, you know, different things. Obviously if you want to see some of the fastest cars in the world, you watch Formula One. If you want to see some of the most you know, cars that are pushing limits of energy efficiency, you know, EV, electric vehicle battery technology, you watch Formula E. Also, you know, strip crates, lots of great street circuits in places that you wouldn't see racing normally take place at. And uh, obviously, that's not a, not such an attraction for our factor. We can just race anywhere anyway. But, you know, but yeah, um, so, so I agree with you there on, on those points. For me, just to wrap this bit up, is to me it shows how important racing in cities would have a core motorsport values and and really like motorsport, like obviously the United Kingdom, Germany, Brazil, places like that where there is such an already a core fan base just for racing. You know, there's a historical aspect of it, and racing in those countries is so important to Formula E because then at least you're attracting like the Formula One fans who would then watch a form go and buy a ticket to a Formula E race because it's you know ten times cheaper and you you know you get the whole day you don't miss practice qualifying the race you get it all in one day it's all over and then you know you, they become Formula E fans they become fans of the sport as well and then you get more eyeballs more people looking for Formula E news and then just looking out for Formula One news that they do every five minutes, which I know so many people do. And if you check Google Trends, you'll see that. If we put Formula One and Formula E, it's night and day the difference. It's like Formula E doesn't even exist compared to Formula One. Can I make just one comment? Uh, I never thought I'd see the day where uh, the Jellies race mob run the Marbula E videos get more views than the uh, sim racing. Yeah, but that's unique, isn't it? It's just a unique thing, but still, that is a fantastic way of sort of getting people into Formula E. Yes, it's a marble race. It doesn't look like it has anything to do with Formula E. But, you know, it's still about Formula E. So then people might be intrigued to actually then go on and look about and look up the series and see what it's about, especially for kids. I think it's a great way to get kids involved. And I think, you know, what Virgin have done has been an amazing achievement. Mm -hmm.